Hi, welcome back to my channel and today I've got another Princess Connect video. I'm Lace and today we're going to be talking about the tank archetype and comparing each of the different characters that live within this group. There's quite a few misconceptions about this group like oh Shizuru is a tank? Why is she dying? Like no, um, unfortunately first of all she's not a tank and I kind of get it she looks like it but she's not and I'll explain why and I'll do a pretty comprehensive evaluation of each of the tanks and how they generally perform. Let's start off with what tanks are and what I personally think makes a good tank. So an introduction to the tank archetype. Tanks in Princess Connect are very similar to what you would expect from tanks in other games. High durability and HP with damage mitigation which in pre-con comes in the form of uh, physical defense, magic defense, dodge and barriers. With these attributes it's clear that the role of of the tank is to soak up as much damage as possible whilst holding the front door to the house that is your delicate DPS and healer units. Depending on the other units you have, as well as the content that you're going for, you're going to be prioritizing different tanks. Some tanks offer disruption skills like stuns, knockbacks, etc., which could really screw with your opponent's attack patterns, whilst others have taunts, so that makes enemies focus your tank, which could actually sometimes be bad. Another consideration is actually their range and where they sit in the front line, which you'll see becomes pretty important if you're running Kauri, <laughs> speedrun in two stars. But especially for the open beta, it's not too much of a concern. The easiest way to distinguish a tank unit from other types of units is to actually probably just consult a wiki or a knowledge base where the characters are tagged with their archetypes. I personally recommend the English fandom. So as you can see, there are a whole bunch of characters and a lot of them actually could be like mistaken for tanks such as Shizuru, who is not in the right position in terms of range because her range makes her stand behind all of the front units including my fragile Makoto. And you've got Yukari who does have damage mitigation and wears armor, but it's not nearly enough to tank stuff to the face. She's also standing behind like everyone, which is useless as a tank. We refer to these units more as like off tanks. They're tanky, but they aren't necessarily fulfilling the role of a main tank. With that being said, let's get into some main tanks. As always, we've got to make some assumptions. Uh, Crunchyroll didn't change anything. All characters are equal stars and have no unique equipment. The bond levels for all of them are maxed out. At least rank seven so that they have access to all of their skills and today we'll be speaking of the relevance up until the above assumptions change so ue gets released rank 7 plus gets released six stars uh, that don't matter to me so as we go through each of these think about what each of these points means for pve and pvp so first up we've got pekrin she's a very standard kit with some physical damage built in and sits in front of most units very standard on-demand physical defense and magical defense buff on herself for damage mitigation that's on her ue be. Very decent tank that's only really limited by her stars, which is good and bad. So if you didn't know, stars contribute to your base stats pretty much. And if your character has more stars, they have more base stats. Unfortunately, in the beginning, this means that other tanks do outperform her until you get her to two star, maybe even three star. If you have another tank, I would probably prioritize them over Pekrin at this point. But one day you will come back to Pekrin, whether that be looking for an extra tank or looking at her six star. And since we need like friggin' 12 characters for clan battle and princess arena anyway if she is your waifu and you gotta build her then i recommend two starring her asap from hard stage and do not blow divine amulets on her i don't care how much you love her there's going to be like a princess background and you're going to regret it. So let's go through advantages and disadvantages. She's very easy to farm for because she has the hard stages. And as we move forward, she actually gets up to six hard stages. The very, very chunky girl at rank seven because of her EX skill, well, this one, which gives her a whole bunch of max HP. And if you think about it, max HP actually gives you damage mitigation for both magic and physical defense right because your hp soaks whatever damage is coming so again she's a decent investment for the eventual six star which probably is like one and a half years away but that's always nice right <laughs> she's got a decent magic defense buff to herself along with hp recovery so that self-sustain that's pretty good and my favorite thing about her probably is her bond level bonus where she actually gets a bunch of like well-balanced stats from, it, from hp to physical defense to magic defense disadvantages so she is pretty far back for a tank right so only nozomi is further back than her this means that she actually can't cover kari but that's not really a disadvantage unless you're very insistent on kari she unfortunately does not have a taunt to pull aggro so you know those mages that fling firebolts at your yui in the back she can't deal with that unfortunately she doesn't have any like stuns or anything no disruption i'm very big on like disruptions especially if it interrupts the enemy skills instead she's got a 
whole bunch of physical damage, which I think is extremely unnecessary for a tank because your tank should be focusing on living, not dealing damage, crappy damage at that. And she will struggle being your main tank in the beginning, especially at one star. The monsters just beat you down way too hard. So as for her action pattern, the damage mitigation is actually quite far in the loop after the initial actions. So if you look here, that, that's her magical defense buff. And that's at the very end of the loop pattern, right? And it's a five action loop pattern that's quite long. So she'll be taking quite a lot of damage or magic damage at least up until then. Like imagine if that skill two there was something else, literally anything else that was a damage mitigation. So it'd be like boom, boom, pop, boom, pop, boom, pop. Oh, I should be a rapper. And she just generally needs more investment than the other tanks because she's a one star. She has lower base stats. So again, she's not really a bad unit per se. Like you just need to invest a little bit in her before you can actually make her your main tank. But until then, I really would recommend running someone else. So, Lima. I don't know. I don't know what to say. She's she's a llama i guess pretty cool aesthetic with some pretty exciting moves to boot she's got a unique skill one called fuzzy fury which allows her to actually rush into battle a little bit later than everyone else and there are some really cool things that you can do with this this does mean that you have to play around it like if your makoto or kari is just standing there uh they might get chunked way too hard but otherwise as long as you're aware of it you just do some team building around it you should be fine she is however more focused on physical damage mitigation so there will be some teams that will exploit this in arena it's it's kind of the reason why magic attackers do so well in arena right now. So advantages, uh, she's a llama, I guess. So she has great physical tanking from her union burst, her first skill and her bond level and her EX skill as well. Well, with all that. So she's got a very decent stun on her skill too. And the action loop isn't here, but if I come over here, so look at this, like initial action is that she waits a bit and then she charges in and gives herself physical defense. And then after that, she attacks, then stuns, then attacks, then stuns, and does that into perpetuity. That's pretty busted if you ask me. Like, so every two attacks, you're kind of like disrupting their frontliner. And so there's like a high chance of disrupting skills from that frontliner. She is farmable from a hard stage, uh, so therefore she is easier to get than others. She eventually goes on to actually be farmable in five hard stages, which is pretty good because later on, we're going to be looking for that six star Lima. Again, 1.5 years down, but a little bit of clairvoyance. And if we go back to the skill one, Fuzzy Fury, this skill is actually really cool because it allows you to actually distribute the damage load onto your second in line. So that means that she doesn't get hit as hard before she comes in, right? So maybe like after a second, she charges in, but by that time, your second in line, hopefully you're not dead Makoto, has actually taken some damage and you've got an AOE healer in Yui and she heals them all up and all is well. So let's talk about disadvantages. She's not that good at magical defense because of her lack of magical defense. <laughs> so this obviously applies for both PvE and PvP. Obviously in PvP, you can actually pick your battles, but PvE, you can't, right? If you want to push. So I guess this affects your arena strategy, right? So if you're attacking, you'd be looking for enemies that don't have magical attackers or else you're Lima is going to get screwed up the butt. Imagine screwing a llama, like, bruh. As of the current patch, she can only be farmed via one hard stage, which makes it a little bit slow, but it's still okay. You know, it gives her, you can get her stars up relatively easy. Just kind of need to have made the decision, you know, do I want Lima? And if so, I should be farming for her like every day, something like that, right? So she doesn't have a taunt, but she might not be wanting to taunt magical damage anyway, right? Because a lot of the time, physical damage is hitting the front line, but it's the magical damage that's kind of hitting the back line. This is for PVE, right? And so you probably don't actually don't want to be taunting that anyway. So she doesn't have any self sustained by heals, that's okay. And again, I just want to reiterate, Fuzzy Fury might get your Makoto or Kaori or whichever agile frontliner you have killed. And as with Pekorin, she's a one star. She's going to need some initial investment before she is actually on par with the rest of the tanks. So unfortunately today, I've only got time to run through two of the characters. I'm really sorry, but there's going to be a part two right after this video, uh, maybe in the next uh, one or two days. So subscribe if you want to see it. <laughs> with that being said, let me summarize what we've talked about today so that you don't forget it too badly. The role of the tank is to actually soak up as much damage as possible by using HP, physical defense, magical defense, dodge, barriers, and other quirky skills like stuns and taunts. Make sure that the tank that you're putting out is actually a tank, otherwise they'll be dying a lot. For Pekarin, she's a decent starter tank, but doesn't have a lot of the sweet features that comes from the archetype like stuns, taunts, heals, and she actually needs some investment before she can pull her weight. Otherwise, she's quite a decent, well-rounded tank. As for Lima, well, I don't know. Well, she's a llama, right? She's great at physical tanking, 
awesome disruption action pattern. I love it because like every second hit is pretty much like saying like, you're not allowed to play the game, Mr. Frontliner. And her quirky skill of just sitting back at the start and then running in, which again, it lets her second in line soak some damage before she starts taking it herself. Distributed damage. With that being said, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you guys have actually learned something. So last time I actually left like kind of a secret message, like the arena in the social construct message. And that was really fun. Like oh, so many of you actually left that comment below. So if we could actually build on that, like, so let's say arenas are just a social construct and llamas spit in my face and I like it. <laughs> so of course, appreciate you guys who come to the end and actually see this, but all good things have got to come to an end. And, and again, like, comment, subscribe, you know the works. See you guys in the next video. Peace.